what I typically do, and what I typically do is provide a PowerPoint presentation. I am going to um, provide everybody with handouts today, and there's two separate handouts that you'll see. Don is passing around one, uh, the other one looks like this. Here are, uh, this document right here has to do with the highlights of Jefferson County. And then the other document that you see going around is a, a document that was produced by the Jefferson County um, and Jeffco EDC, Economic Development Corporation, so the Jeffco EDC. Now one thing on this document that you'll see is I stamped draft because it is very very rough right now, but the documentation is, is still very good. When it comes out in final form, it'll look very similar to what you see here. This is the 2012 document dealing with the 2011 numbers. But I will, uh, majority of my time I want to spend today, hopefully, is to uh, take questions. If anybody has questions, hopefully I can provide some answers. But I'd like to uh, hit a few items real quick. One of which I would just want, I wanted to say thank you very much to Melissa and Dawn and many others in this room. I had the great opportunity of coming up and being a judge at the luge competition. <laughs> And I tell you what, it was a ton of fun. And probably the best part about it, and I have a video of it, is watching all the volunteer firemen and women from Elk Creek go down in all their gear and hit jumps and completely wipe out. <laughs> it was amazing. And it was a good workout, wasn't it, Chief? Uh, it was a great, a great community builder, and I hope to see you all there next year at the second annual, right? Yep. Second annual. With, with more snow, but I have to tell you, um, Elk Creek uh, Fire Department came over and they were moving snow onto the trail, onto the run, and I have never seen more people work so hard and sweating. Everybody else was shivering. They were they had sweat dripping off of them. They were hustling so hard. Actually, um, since you brought it up, you had a really good uh, aerial dismount when you hit that. You know, <laughs> And he, and he said, because we went down at the same time, he said, oh, that hurt. It did, it did. It, it bit me backwards, the way you're not supposed to bend, and that, that did hurt. Don challenged me to go down, and, and yeah, that, that was painful. Sorry, and we'll do that again next year. Thank you. Well, no, I will go down next year. And those skis right there look like the ones I ski on all the time. So, um, you know, I, I'm too cheap to buy new skis, those fat ones. Hmm? Is that a challenge? That's a challenge. I will be there. And uh, so with that, a couple items that uh, we as Board of County Commissioners and the county in general are looking at going forward here um, this year. One is Amendment 64, having to do with the legalization of recreational marijuana. If you've read it, I'm sure you've seen on the news, read in the newspaper about the governor's task force on how to implement the rules and regulations having to do with medical marijuana. Many counties have already opted out of, and counties and cities have opted out of, which is a provision allowed in Amendment 64, to opt out of allowing the sale and cultivation of recreational marijuana. It still does not allow you to opt out of the use of marijuana and the um, possession. You can possess one ounce of marijuana, which is take a sandwich baggie and fill it up. That's typically one ounce of marijuana. Um, there are some discussions right now as you have, you're supposed to be able to smoke in a private location, it cannot be public. Well, define public versus private. Is that in your car while you're driving down the street? Is it in your front yard? Is it at a private club? Uh, there, there are many, many, many different items that need to be discussed here. Uh, Jefferson County as a whole voted for the legalization of marijuana by 10 percentage points. If you look at unincorporated Jefferson County, they also voted for the legalization of marijuana by 4 percentage points. So overall, Jefferson County says we want the legalization of marijuana. Now it is 
the task of planning and zoning, planning commission, board of county commissioners, law enforcement, and all of us to get together to say, um, oh, what are the rules, what are the regulations, um, how is this implemented, and how do we keep um, children safe? How do we keep others that should not have access to, to marijuana, how to keep them safe, and how do we implement this process? It's going to be very interesting to see, and there are going to be a multitude of, of lawsuits that come out. Also, in regards to um, different, ideas, different things that have happened over the last year, the Western Beltway is what I'm going to call it. Uh, if you look at Jefferson Parkway up on the north part of the county, uh, the county recently closed on uh, three miles of right-of-way from the Rocky Flats Wildlife Refuge. So that was a federal government Department of Interior transfer. Uh, the Jefferson Parkway Public Highway Authority closed on that piece. At the same time, Jefferson County, Boulder County, the city of Boulder and Arvada did a land transfer uh, of Section 16 to the Wildlife Refuge. And yes, you heard me right. Jefferson County did have an agreement with Boulder County and the city of Boulder. Many people are like, wow, I thought you hated each other. No, we actually got together and this made sense. And uh, that transfer occurred. Uh, the property was purchased by the from the state land board, and those dollars went into uh, you know education. Primary education is where those dollars were going to, and then that property was uh, was then uh, put into the uh, wildlife refuge. If uh, a couple other items here is uh, Heather didn't mention, but I want to bring up having to do with the uh, there's a master plan update that is being completed by Open Space uh, Parks and Open Space in the Conifer area. Having to they're taking assessment of all the parks that are up here, parking lots, any facilities such as bathrooms, trailheads, looking at. Um, overall, doing a comprehensive study of, of all the outdoor parks and open space facilities. And then that document will be published here, I, I do recall, with this, it's about a year. For the Conifer, uh, yeah. There's a steering committee that has been formed for the Conifer Park Plan. And we just met last night, and the, we're looking at a plan. I believe we have about two years to create the plan, so we're aiming for, I think it's December 2014. And I received uh, numerous emails and phone calls from individuals in, in the Conifer area. This is a, not a way to go around to set up a park and rec district. This is a way for Jefferson County, for parks and open space, to make sure that the dollars that you contribute, all of you up here, that you contribute to Jefferson County Open Space Program, the Parks Program with Jefferson County, that those dollars are being brought back into the area, into the Conifer community, and that those dollars are being used wisely, that we're being good stewards of those dollars. So it's a way to look at and making sure that if you're paying in, a dollar that you're getting a dollar's worth of services and of improvements in this area. So it's a, it's a way for us to be good stewards with those dollars and make sure that we're being fair and equitable um, to those um, services that we're providing. Um, also, if you look at light rail, uh, the West Line, the opening date there is April 26th. And uh, that light rail facility will have a grand opening. Anybody who shows up that weekend, uh, you get to ride for free. And we'll have every station along the way will have a little bit of something going on. Uh, the somebody says the you know I say the end of line station there at the at the Jeffco uh, Courts and Administration Building, but somebody corrected me the other day, and that's the beginning of the line. So at the beginning of the line, we'll also be having a. Um, a get-together celebration, more of very interactive. It's a more of an outdoor theme of getting out and enjoying what we all love, Jefferson County, and to get out and enjoy the mountains. We'll have uh, just a whole host of, of activities going on there. 
And then also what the, the chief brought up in regards to code red. I signed up the other day myself personally to have it on my cell phone and I'll actually have it on my house phone. You are allowed to input how many people are in your house if you'd like, if there's any disabilities that exist from anybody that lives in your home, um, number of bedrooms, anything else that you wish to put in there that would be helpful to those first responders. If you have multiple stairs, if you have a unique living situation that you believe is helpful, please put it in there because that information is transferred to those first responders so they know they have that information. If you don't want to, you can put in as much or as little information as you would like. Um, I didn't put in a ton of information. I put in very little. But um, that's, I just want to have those, those updates. Also, if you look at, I'm going to go to this document. Hopefully everybody's had time to get one of these documents. This is the Jefferson County update of what happened last year. Just want to point uh, to uh, a few things on here. One, financial stability of the county. We have received a AA rating from Moody's, from Fitch, from a multitude of financial reporting and, and reporting institutions. We are very stable. We've had great um, financial success over the past few years. However, we are still dipping into our reserves uh, for operations. As was mentioned by the chief, we were, when you look at the, the adjustments in, in property tax and, and, and valuations of our homes, um, property tax makes up a majority of the revenue that the county receives. As we, as our property valuations went down, the revenues coming into the county uh, to provide services also went down. Those will go up and we're in a two year lag. We're in the rears by two years. As the cities are seeing now, their revenues go up because of their sales tax revenues. The county is still back here, but yet the nice thing is we went into the recession two years later than or in the lag of, of most of the cities. So we're not seeing any bump right now. However, we expect that in the next probably three to four years, but we're still in the rears a little bit in regards to uh, uh, property tax. Also on here, as you can see, there are, are a multitude of different services being provided. We're still seeing an increase in, in services, in human services. More and more people are walking through the front door asking for some sort of assistance, whether it be in housing allowance or assistance, uh, food assistance, uh, daycare. It still is at an alarmingly high rate. And um, we are, let's put it this way, there are many counties out there who overspend their allocation. We are not one of them. We do not, we live within our means and uh, within uh, human services, and we make sure that people who come through that door, they actually need it, and they're not trying to go around the system by getting something that they do not need. We track individuals who get um, any type of assistance. Also, telephone town halls. I don't know if any of you were involved with the, um, that round of telephone town halls that we had, but we, we reached out and we we had great success with the telephone town hall process. We reached a little over 7,600 individuals um, during that process. Here they kind of discounted it down to 7,000. It was 7,600 at the end of the day. And um, what a great way to reach out to a, a whole host of individuals. And you can sit in your living room as, as well, Stan did this. He sat in his boxers and his t-shirt and his lazy boy, and he participated in the telephone town hall. Um, I'm just joking. We had we had a camera on him actually. That was a bad visual, wasn't it? Damn. But it, it provides an opportunity that you don't have to go down the mountain uh, to participate. You don't have to travel. You can you can participate in your in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever wherever it may be, and it, it provides a great interactive opportunity. Also, I want to point out. Uh, Bairdin Lodge is in the process of being renovated, and this is going to be a multi-year process, and uh, through the Colorado Historical Commission, through um, 
parks and open space, this is a great opportunity to revitalize that area and to bring up that lodge. And uh, it's, a, it's a great asset to our community and uh, great things are on the uh, horizon there. Also, in the documentation that was handed out here, the economic profile, I just want to bring up one item, and that is, if you look at overall, let me get the page. If you look at, uh, pages are not numbered, but median household income. If you look at Jefferson County, I just want to point this out that in 20, well, in the previous years, so in 2012, in 2011, excuse me, the median household income in Jefferson County was $75,214. In 2012, it was $67,827. Our median household income is coming down. Our home values are decreasing, but not at the same rate. And in fact, in some areas, those, those household uh, valuations are staying very constant, if not even going up in some cases. So it, there's, there's kind of this, it's trending a direction that we don't like to see a trend. Incomes are going down, home values are staying the same or going up. It's not a good sign um, as far as uh, affordability, especially in Jefferson County. If you look at Metro Denver, overall, household medium income was down around $10,000. Colorado was down a little bit more, but the U.S. average was only down $2,000 per household. So we have really taken it in the shorts, as to say, over the past um, few years for household income. And it's a trend that we need to um, really look at, uh, analyze, and see what we can do economic development wise to uh, improve. With that, I'm gonna open up for questions. What's the master plan for the Beltway in Golden? Uh, latest? Master plan for the Beltway in Golden. There are a couple, couple things. One is Jefferson Parkway stops before it gets to Golden. So Jefferson Parkway, as designed currently, goes from 128th, right by the airport, down to Highway 93, right about 64th at that intersection there. Um, if you look at what's going on south on 470, the 470 Coalition, we had a board meeting yesterday, and uh, we agreed to keep moving forward there with the plans. Uh, we're, uh, with that C-470 coalition looking at 470 from I-25 up to I-70. The first phase is from I-25 to Kipling. The Board of County Commissioners recently approved a comprehensive plan um, compilation, and that is to take what's been done at Jefferson Parkway, to take what Golden has done with their plan to look at and to incorporate the C-470 plans to look at the entire beltway. Right now there's a lot of pieces and no big puzzle to look at. So we are taking all those pieces and putting them together so we can have one view of, of that corridor. And Golden updated their plan, the Golden plan or the Moeller plan, and it actually um, includes if they reach a certain uh, threshold for amount of traffic, it includes managed or toll lanes um, at a, uh, through there as long as, and it also includes general purpose lanes. So, but it's a very, it, what, what has been planned is a very expensive section. Just that small um, stretch of the road between Golden's around $250 million. Yes? It, it, the, the question is, with Amendment 64, does it also include the production of industrial hemp? Yeah. I don't know. That's so a great question. It has such great uses. I didn't see anything in this economic profile, but we could pave the way for the United States to you know, show the country well, what we can do with that. 
you know, the hip can be used in, you know, ropes and clothing and, and a variety of building, right, building houses, filters. I don't know in regards to that, but there's also, in, in, as far as the raising of um, the cultivation of marijuana, you can have six plants. Uh, that's allowed per the Amendment 64 per person. And... Right. Right. So I don't. I don't. I. I can't answer the question. I will look into it. If you want to give me your card? I can get back to you. Sure. Um, so with the cultivation, there's been questions and, and concerns about will allow for co-oping of of growing, such that if I go out to all of you in this room and I say, "Can you give me your six plants that are allowed through Amendment 64, and I can have them? I can have a warehouse down the street." And I can grow them because I'm the farmer for you. I've taken the responsibility of all your plants. So I have this big, huge cultivation process going on. Is that allowed in Amendment 64? That is being discussed right now. Um, and when we go through this whole process, there's a lot of gray right now and a lot of frustration of, of what's happening. So I'll check. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. So as someone who tries to promote uh, an event around here, I am totally confused about what's allowed as far as signage and not signage. Ah, we, 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 talked we just today. discussed that, and it was about the third or fourth different story I heard in the last two oh. months. Signage, signage, signage. The first phone call I got after being sworn in as a county commissioner was from Don and from Stan saying, what's up with signage? Exactly. Um, what in in our ordinance, it, in our sign ordinance, it originally said that it did not allow for external signage on businesses, such as banners and or a frame sandwich board signs outside. Um, I received in talking with Don and Stan that that was causing some angst with businesses around here, and it was very difficult. Along with that, nonprofits said, "Hey, we also have problems because." If we went out to get a special permit, we could only put a banner at the location of the event. On the location of the event, it could only be there for a, a, a set period of time, and it was costing us to $150 for this permit. What has been changed is this. One is the, the, the banner signs are no longer just limited to the place of the event. They can be elsewhere. Businesses can also put up banners to say, hey, we're having a sale. You can also put up sandwich board signs out front, A-frame, if you're having a sandwich special, if you're having a, a half-off special, whatever the case may be, they can be placed in front of, of the business. Um, it also allows that the director of planning and zoning has the ability, he has the ability to waive the fee for any type of application for a special use permit when it comes to signage and that actual permit itself. So John Wolforth has that ability. We as Board of County Commissioners gave him that authority to waive that fee. Also to look at how and where those, those banners are to be placed, he has that authority to go in there and adjust and modify as, as he sees. And if you don't agree with him, you can always come to the Board of County Commissioners or Planning Commission uh, for adjustment there. So. Yes, I mean, that was that was number one, number one. And I don't say no to Don or Stan. <laughs> Especially Don. Especially. Sure. What's the status, money status of Main Street? Funding status? How's, when you mean, what, the maintenance of the road or funding? The, 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 plan, the master plan. Master plan that would take us through like finances dollars and simply connect our two main streets. Yeah. I, I'm pointing to Melissa. She's the queen of that plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the funding and the part of it. Uh, the funding can lie in a, a multitude of, of locations. And when I say that, because the, the plan that, that Melissa's been working on with the signage and uh, looking at how to provide that, um, what's the best way, the character 
uh, of, of conifer and how to connect the, the, the different areas of conifer in, in a sense that you're here, it's that community building, um, a variety. One is they were tasked, Melissa and a group of individuals were tasked with going in and looking at the signing, putting together a signage program to say where would it be best to put different signage. Directional signage, main um, large monument plans um, to look at you know, the primary and the secondary and the tertiary sign program and then to work with planning and zoning, to work with transportation to say, hey, do these signs make sense to be located here? And then, after, and then subsequent to that is to work with the county as far as how do we go forward with providing a financing structure for those signage, for that signage program, for that beautification program, wherever the case may be, whatever that, that ultimate plan ends up to be, is how do we finance that? Is this something? There is no funding plan. There is no defined funding plan at this time. No, sir. But in essence, we look at there's, there's, there's opportunities of the county stepping forward to provide fundings, whether it's be through uh, parks, open space, whether it be through the general fund, whether it be through Jeffco EDC, whether it be through a variety of different platforms where if you're a business owner and you'd like to have a sign out front, but that overall capital cost, maybe that sign is $10,000. I'm just going to throw it out there. If that capital cost is restricting you from being able to do that, the county could, in essence, step forward and say, well, we'll, per we'll go ahead and and spot those dollars to you, and there's a repayment program either directly back to the county and or through a special district, through, there's discussion of maybe through the chamber. There's an opportunity where we have this mechanism. So is there a defined one right now? No, sir, there is not. Was there ever? Uh, not that I know. Yes, ma'am. I don't, okay. but I can I give me your contact and I'll get you that information. I don't off the top of my head. Um, my second question is for the town hall meeting on February 19th, are you going to be the commissioner and what do you see as um, your talks? Um, I was asked to speak. I'm trying to juggle a few things on the 19th yeah. because I have multiple meetings on the 19th and that's the hard part about it. But uh, all three of the county commissioners have been asked to come up and speak. So yes, um, I will, uh, I'm working really hard in order to be there. Uh, the topics having to do with uh, Lower North Fork fire, fire prevention, I, top, you know, topics for me, looking at transportation, looking at overall county funding, and how we move forward with rebuilding um, within, um, you know, planning and zoning within a building department to those individuals that are affected by the Lower North Fork fire, how, to, how do we help those individuals who wish to rebuild, how do we get them to rebuild and try to eliminate all those onerous regulations that tip, typically slow down the process. Those are probably my, my key points. Do you have anything you'd like me to talk about? I don't know, but I can be in touch with you. Okay, perfect. All right. Any more? Any more? Thank you very much. Appreciate it.